Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Bowman Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition, 12 box, pick your team number 15. Now Bowman Chrome fans, go to jazbeescasebreaks.com right now because we've got more hobby in the store and HTA back on the menu. So check that out, jazbeescasebreaks.com. All cards ship. Big thanks to everybody here for making it happen. Most of the teams were in a, uh, were kind of randomized. It was in that team random. So there's sort of a hybrid random and pick your team kind of action here. Jacob, you got the Pirates last before we pulled them for the filler. So that's last spot mojo for you. 70% of the time, last spot mojo hits 100% of the time. All right, here's the big case. Oh, now my phone is in the way. We've got the football game on right here. Let's pop this case open. Let's see what we got. I think we have more HTA and hobby on personal breaks as well at Jaspie's Breaks on Instagram. So let me take, speaking of, let me take this out of my inventory system here. I forgot to do that before the break. It's going to take just a couple seconds here. It's a 12 box case right now. All right, here's the first box. Good luck. And quiet on the baseball front, right? Not, not too much going on in the baseball world. Some small little deals being done here and there. No, but no major, no major trades yet. No major free agents locked in. But the, uh, the winter meetings are coming up. I think, on, I think they go from Sunday to Wednesday or something like that. They're going to be in San Diego. At a really nice hotel that I've that I've stayed at before, so really nice spot downtown San Diego. They're gonna get some discussions going. I think there was some rumor that uh, or some speculation, maybe a little smoke that uh, that Aaron Judge kind of wants to get the deal uh, a deal done sooner rather than later. Maybe at the uh, at the winter meetings. Maybe some other free agents will get signed there during that weekend as well. Also, is it just me or are the uniforms very sim similar for the for Buffalo and the Patriots? For Buffalo and New England. Like the helmets look very similar. A white helmet and the blue and red stripe in the middle. It's a little confusing at first glance. Alright, first box. Good luck. All card ship. It's Christian Hernandez. 177 out of 250. Well, let me move my phone back here. My penny slips right here. Edgar would like to have Belly back, but at a uh, what, but at a low, low one or two year deal. Yeah, I think I mean I think just his defense alone is worth getting him back. But right. It's got to be at a, at a really low level, but I don't know. There's Christian Vaccaro for the Nats, Sean Maddock, and Jason Curio for Cleveland. That's for Jacob. We're also looking for his brother Jackson for the Brew Crew. It's Bobby Witt Jr. I don't know. What would you pay him, Edgar? What, what's low for you? And there's Yerlin Confidant for the Reds. There's James Altman. He might get some shots for the Dodgers next year to 150. Might be maybe a replacement for Bellinger. There's a Q. Brian Hayes. Refractor. 412 out of 499 going to Jacob and the Pirates. 
And John Rhodes, 173 out of 150. I'll go to Mark from the Orioles, won that in the filler. Now, I wouldn't mind giving Bellinger like a, a one-year deal for, I was going to say the same thing, Edgar, $10 million a year. Right, so it's much, much lower than the qualifying offer of almost twenty million dollars, like nineteen and a half million dollars, something like that. So it's much lower than that. I think, I think that's worth it. And obviously, if he has a bounce back season offensively, you know, I mean, that would be, that would be a bonus. I think the Dodgers have invested so much into him over the years. You know, it's more likely that there's Benny Montgomery for the Rockies, by the way, Matthew. It's more likely that, it, that, that, that the team that drafted a player will most likely give him another chance. I mean, how many other teams are going to get Bellinger for, for more than that, you know, to, to take a gamble on him? Maybe the Giants, just because, just because Farhan up in... Uh, Zaidi up in uh, San Francisco already has some sort of familiarity with him. But other, other than that, it's hard to see a lot of other teams really taking a flyer on him unless it's, uh, unless it's like they've, they've exhausted all other options and they're like, well, I guess, I guess we can try Bellinger. We tried we try signing all these other guys. And... But yeah, I don't. I don't think unless Bellinger falls into to their laps at a really team friendly deal, I don't think they're going to re-sign him. Yeah, what do you do about Justin Turner? I feel like it's either going to be Bellinger or Justin Turner as the as the guy that they bring. But I think it's going to be more JT over Bellinger. I think they'll sign him for another year or two. But you don't want JT back. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one too. But he's got to he's got to come back knowing that he's going to be in a in a off the bench role, not not a starting role. I think that has to be made clear to uh, bring guys like Bobby Miller up for the Dodgers. There's Jordani De Los Santos, twenty three out of one at ninety nine. Magenta Shimmer. Exactly, yeah. If he takes that Chase Utley kind of role, and if he knows that going into it, you know, then I'd be like, hey, welcome back. Small little deal. There's uh, Samuel Munoz for the Dodgers. That's going to go to Edward. But I agree, Edgar. I do think that there needs to be a little bit of a shakeup in the locker room. There just needs to be a little more, a little more spice in the locker room. You know. There's Jeremy Pena, purple this time, to 250. Nice one for Mark and the Astros. Like we already got too many, uh, too many low key guys. You know, Trey Turner was kind of a chill dude. JT, Clayton Kershaw, Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts are all kind of, kind of, a little too chill. I think I think there needs to be some younger guys in there, just to kind of, you know, just to kind of shake things up a little bit, just to add a little spice and a little fire. You know. There are a lot of there are a lot of youngsters on that uh, a lot of youngsters on that Phillies team that went to the World Series. You know, they they're at, they had a little a little bit of spark, a little bit of fire. I think that's kind of what I'd like to see. You know, start weaving in some more of the the I mean, far farm systems, all that. I'd like to see a little more of those guys. You know, end up with the team and given starting roles and be like. The Trey Turner of the future. Let's find the new Trey Turner. Let's find the next Mookie Betts. You know, let's let's find the next and develop and give opportunities to the next Freddie Freeman. You know, that kind of thing. There's James Wood. Ooh, piece of candy. Forty-seven out of two ninety-nine. Speckle. And that's a one per case at Luis Rodriguez. Sometimes we've seen two. 
It's like a little uh, indentation right there. Maybe from the factory, there might have been a little little machine part that looked like it crimped that area there, unfortunately. But Edward, that's, that'll still go to you. Sometimes we've seen two in a case. And, you know, I'd like to see guys like Luis Rodriguez kind of come up, get a shot. Miguel Vargas. If you ever watch uh, any of the... Uh, the behind-the-scenes Dodger stuff on the Dodgers network. They did a little profile on uh, Miguel Vargas. And he seems like a really, really fun guy. Real chatterbox, seems to talk a lot, you know, can hit really well. You know, he, I'm counting on Miguel Vargas, actually, a lot. To maybe take over third base, maybe play a little outfield. He can hit well. And I think... Uh, you know, he talks a bit, you know, like I kind of like that sort of, sort of, uh, sort of fire. Kind of like Alex Verdugo. Alex Verdugo had, you know, a bit of that, that spark to him. You know, even, I miss Kike. Kike Hernandez had like a little bit of a, a little spice to him as well, a little fire. Just a little goofy personality, which I like. Kept, kept people loose, kept people hungry. I think you kind of need that. Like a Kurt Gibson, you know? Like Kurt Gibson getting into that 1988 team, providing that, that spice, that spark, that fire. Maybe with some young guys. Yeah, Jorge saying, yeah, 100, Vargas 100% needs to get the chance to step up. He should be. Right, I'd love to see Cartaya get some time. I mean, I don't know, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll try to retain Will Smith, but maybe it's time to, maybe Austin Barnes gets eased out a little bit. Maybe Cartaya gets a chance to, uh, to get some reps, you know? There's Michael Burrows. It's for the Pirates, Jacob. Last spot mojo, strikes again. I think that's what the Dodgers, you know, last season was very disappointing, but Dodgers really haven't needed to do too much. They don't need to do too much. They maybe need to, need to get some fresh young blood involved in the team, right, especially on the offensive side. I'd like to see maybe another starting pitcher get picked up, either via free agency or trade, most likely trade, and get up another, another young pitcher, maybe a, yeah, like a Gavin Stone or a Bobby Miller or... Let's see which one is going to be that fourth or fifth starter. You know, maybe maybe add another quality arm, replenish the bullpen, and kind of anoint a proper closer maybe. I know the Dodgers like to goof around with that closer spot, but I think when you get to playoff time, you kind of need a more defined, more of a defined role, I think. The Freddie Freeman refractor to 499. Yeah, would have loved to have Luis Castillo. That would have been a nice pickup. In retrospect, that would have helped a lot, I think. Ooh, an out of five autograph. JT Schwartz. That's for you, Edgar. A little, uh, little Rojo coming at you. And out of fives and under. Get the train whistle, Edgar. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Nice. Let's see what this guy. This guy's a local guy, kind of. Newport Beach, fourth round pick, number eighteen Mets prospect in their organization. Grew up admiring Nolan Arenado, Chase Utley. Went to UCLA. All right. Nice, that's pretty nice. That Bobby Witt will go to Ed and the Royals. Pete Crow Armstrong, 21 out of 125. Cubs, that'll be for Michael. All right, fourth box.
Uh, Jorge and Edgar, what do you think about Justin Verlander maybe being linked to the to the Dodgers? Not sure how I feel about that. I, I know they're probably not going to commit too many years to him, but I don't know. I feel like that's like another. Uh, do we need Do we need uh, Justin? I'd like I'd like to maybe chase after Degrom for like the same amount of money. You know, like shorter years, higher average annual value. Jorge, you think? You'd, you'd go with Verlander for a year or two, the way he pitched last season? Yeah, I guess he still has a lot left in the tank. Right, yeah, then we don't have to face him in the World Series. I'm sure Mrs. Justin Verlander would love to uh, spend the summer in L.A. Miguel Cabrera retiring after next season. He's announced it. Is Victor Acosta? These shimmers are not uh, are not numbered, by the way, but all card ship. And there's Jeremy Vargas for Brian and the Brew Crew. Yeah, that's a that's. Carlos Correa, does he end up with the Dodgers? There's Edie Cap to 150. That could be really interesting. Yeah, I think a lot of Dodgers fans don't like Carlos Correa. But, but I mean, he'd, he'd be a good fit. The, the injuries concern me a little bit. Here's C.J. Abrams right here to 499, and there's Jojo Blackman, 220 out of 299, speckle autograph for David and the Rangers. Got a gold. Daniel Cueva, 27 out of 75. Yasser Mercedes for the Twins, that'll be for Mark. And the Cueva for David Nadler and the Ranger, that's to 75. Uh, more of a yellow parallel, I guess, not, not gold, gold's to 50. All right, first third of the case done. Here comes the second third, middle third. I think we saw this used yesterday, but Phillies reportedly have Trey Turner as a top priority. Padres Diamondbacks among the teams interested in Xander Bogarts. And of course, after Correa and Trey Turner and Xander get off the board, Dansby Swanson is a free agent too. He's not too bad either. Probably at a, a lower price than, uh, than those other guys. Correa, twins, I think a little little bit ago, had made multiple offers to Carlos Correa. So let's see if he wants to still hang around. Red Sox interested in Mitch Hanniger. National sign, signing Franklin Barreto to the to a minor league deal. James and Tyon drawing strong interest in free agency. All right, 
right, next one. And we got it. Emmanuel Valdez, 003 out of 299 for Houston. Mark with the Astros. And we got a Che Wan Bin, the South Korean, to 199. Torkelson. All right, so Torque going to Matthew and the Tigers. Hopefully, he has a bounce back year this year, this upcoming season. Cardinals will get the Korean player. That's Mark. Wander Franco go to Edward. Uh, Spencer Torkelson being a former number one overall pick, you got to think that he has a has a longer leash. And we got Jack Herman. 135 out of 499, refractor autograph for Jacob and the Pirates. Last spot mojo. 70% of the time, 100% of the time. Second auto for the Pirates. It's Matt Manning. Uh, not numbered, so this must be a variation. Nice. Tigers. It's going to be for Matthew. Usually the refractors are numbered to 499. All right, next box. Wow, baseball news. Uh, Hall of Famer, Gaylord Perry. Passed away today at 84 RIP, two-time Cy Young Award winner. And used his creative pitching arsenal, according to MLB.com, to win 314 games, strike out over 3,500 batters over his 22 Hall of Fame career. Third ballot, I want to say. You would trade the farm for Otani? I think I think we can just wait. We can just wait for that one year extension that Otani signed, wait a year. And if the Angels don't make it to the playoffs, I think you can just snatch him up in free agency. And take all that take take that Trey Turner money, take all the JT money, take take all that and put it in the Otani boat. Next box, got Wes Kath, 62 out of 99, green shimmer for Steven and the White Sox. And we've got a Juan Guerrero, 345 out of 499, refractor autograph for the Rocks, that's for Matthew. For the most part, the penmanship, the autos have been pretty good. Maybe, maybe he might not be the not be on top of that list though. There's Simon Juan, 182 out of 250, purple chrome for Edgar and the Mets. Got a yes sir Mercedes for the Twins. Mark with that. Let's see if we can find some parallels or some ink of that kid. We got Joey Votto, 205 out of 299. Magenta for the Red Legs, John, the Reds. 
Jeremy Pena rookie card for Mark and the Astros. And a redemption. It's Christian Franklin. Chicago Cubs. Michael P. I'll randomize the Cubs and the team random. Got a Lonnie White Jr. speckle to 249. 299. All right, another box. So according to MLB.com, we've got some rumors here. December 1st rumors, that's today. Thursday, December the 1st, Thursday. Your Thursday, my Friday. So John Morosi from MLB.com saying that uh, puts chance of Judge of San Francisco at close to 50-50. Aaron Judge has an offer on the table in the neighborhood of eight years and 300 million from the Yankees, according to ESPN's Jeff Passan. But negotiations may only be just getting started. Well, past notes that their Yankees offer could increase depending on how on how far the Giants, the other top suitor, are willing to push the market. Morosi is saying, and he's not ruling out the Giants winning it out in the end. The Giants are a very realistic possibility, Morosi said Thursday on MLB Network. This is not a Yankees at 70% likelihood and the Giants at 30. I think we're very close to 50-50. I mean, the, 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 there's the, there's the uh, Aaron Judge going back home narrative to Northern California. Giants have, I think, have wanted like a superstar kind of player in that sort of younger lineup. I hope they do drive up the price, Jorge. I agree. December 1st, another rumor here. Insiders optimistic DeGrom stays with the Mets. The Yankees, Rangers, Cubs, and Rays are among the team's reportedly interested in adding Jacob DeGrom this winter. However, majority of team executives and MLB insiders indicated in a poll conducted by ESPN's Jesse Rogers that they believe DeGrom will ultimately re-sign with the Mets. We got another pirate. Speckle Auto, Jack Herman, 77 out of 299. Another pirate for Jacob. Ah, speaking of Aaron Judge, there he is. Five out of 99. Casey with the Yankees. There's Brian Dela Cruz, rookie card, blue to 150 for the fish. That'll be for Chris. If you're the Yankees, though, how do you, you can't let that guy walk out the building, right? I wonder, I wonder how pissed fans would be if he, if he doesn't end up back on the Yankees. They'd, they'd have to make another big move really quickly if, if they lose that on the on the uh, Aaron Judge sweepstakes. There's Anthony Gutierrez for David and the Rangers. Errol Vera, Refractor, 118 out of 499 for the Angels. It's gonna be for Jacob. Won that team in the filler. Other notes do we have here from MLE.com? The Phillies have reportedly made shortstop Trey Turner their top priority in free agency, according to John Paul Morosi from MLB.com. That report was yesterday. I think we talked about this yesterday, too. But according to MLB.com's Todd Zalecki, the Phillies feel good 
about their chance of coming with one of the star free agent shortstops this offseason, whether it's Turner, Carlos Correa, Xander Bogarts, or or uh, Dansby Swanson. Trey Turner, I think, is number one on the Phillies list, and I don't even think it's the expectation from outside the Phillies they're going to get one of the top shortstops, Zalecki said. I think the expectation internally, as well as that the Phillies are going to get one of those four shortstops. Trey Turner is probably the top of the list, but I don't think the Phillies would be too upset if they got Carlos Correa, Xander, or Dansby Swanson instead. Mitch Hanniger drawing some interest from the Red Sox and Rangers. Yeah, big shortstop market this year. Trying to look for that Corey Seager money. Next couple mini boxes here. Good luck, everybody. We got Ellie Dela Cruz, Purple Shimmer, 186 out of 250 for the Reds. That'll be for John. A Wander Franco and a Juan Bin Cho autograph for the Cardinals. That's going to be for Mark. There you go, one of the 12 Cardinals International signings. Long, lanky athlete, five tool possibilities. Did they sign him out of high school? Interesting. Edward with the Rays gets the wander. There's a Torkelson rookie card for the Tigers. That'll be for Matthew. And Jordani De Los Santos. 38 out of 75. Yellow parallel for the Pirates. A little color match there. Jacob and the Buckos. Another stack. So Bobby Wood Jr. and Evan Lee behind him. Sean Maddock with the Nationals. There you go, Sean. Bobby Wood Jr. for Ed Aarons. And the Royals, Nelson Velasquez to $4.99 for the Cubbies. For Michael P, 348 out of 499. All right, final third of the case coming up. We've discussed this before. We'll discuss it again, I'm sure, many times throughout the offseason and next season. How are the rule changes going to help? Um, help certain players, especially the speedy players. You can only, often, I don't see the exact details of the rules, but you can only throw so many times to check a runner. A pitcher can only throw so many times to a base to check a runner. Which means if there's a guy with decent speed, and they've been checked enough times, I mean, that could be could be a steal opportunity. Could be some uh, good gamesmanship, a little cat and mouse there. Now, I think everyone assumes, oh, well, what if the pitcher does that? It's on, is it on a max stolen base? I don't know. Could there be moments where a pitcher, where a pitcher will waste those pickoff attempts just to dare a hitter to uh, a base runner to, to steal that base? Maybe this guy thinks he's a little bit faster than he is. Maybe, you know, and then if you have a good catcher, you pump a fastball in there.
Could be interesting. The bases are bigger too. There's O'Neill Cruz. And Antonio Pinheiro for the Brew Crew. Brian with the Brewers. There's Giordani De Los Santos, 34 out of 99, green parallel for the Pirates. Purple pen is coming up now. All right. Purple pen, purple pen. And we've got a Jose Rodriguez, orange, 9 out of 25. It's for the Rangers. It's going to be for David. Got the Rangers in the filler. Roderick Arias is one of the guys Yankees are looking for. Casey with that one. Luis Rodriguez, Refractor. Fifty-seven out of four ninety-nine for the Dodgers. That's going to be for Edward. I think the bases are uh, are growing by all, maybe an inch, which is which is a, a, a decent size uh, size change, especially if if you kind of look at a uh, look at how many close plays there are when bases are being stolen. A lot of times, it's, it's by a fingertip, one way or the other. And I want to say that second base is moving in. I don't know, someone correct, someone fact check me on that. I want to say the actual second base is moving in closer to the pitcher's mound by a little bit. And no shift. The shift is gone. Now, some people suggest that, you know, it's not like the shift is going to help. It's not like the shift is going to help uh, Joey Gallo. I think he's still going to strike out as much as he does, but I don't know. We'll see. Crush Weekend says, no, they're not moving second base. I don't think the 90 feet is changing, and just the geometry is changing. Oh, I guess there, I, I don't think it's happening actually. It's gonna, here, here's the news article. I think they're experimenting with it in the Atlantic League. I don't know what the results of that were, but the base is going to be moving inward, so it'll be closer to first and third base by about 13.5 inches. But the 90 feet is still the same. There's Julio Rodriguez. I think the argument is that it's not. If you look at the article, and I remember this this was the article I read back, way back in the spring, the geometry is not a perfect diamond. The interesting thing about the move to move the base is it draws attention to the fact the bases aren't actually exactly 90 feet apart. Second base is a bit off and has been for over for well over a century. There's Luis Gill blue for Casey and the Yankees. So check out that article. 
and scroll down a little bit, they'll, 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 they'll explain the math. Three out of 50, Danny De Andrade for the Twins, gold for Mark. I thought that rule was in place, but I guess they're just kind of testing it in the, uh, in the Atlantic League, the sandbox for all those rule changes. All right, and there's, there's Danny again, autograph this time for Mark and the Twins. See you, Michael. Have a good one, man. Ryan Reckley, 443 out of 499. For the Giants, that'll be for Dan. I think it, it, I don't, the base has not officially moved, but they have been experimenting with it in the Atlantic League. And if, uh, if it does get closer by over a foot, I mean, that's going to encourage a lot, of, should, in theory, encourage a lot more base running activity. Do we get back to the glory days of base stealing? Back in the day, I feel like they were, which sounds crazy to me now, but back in the day, I feel like there were guys, individuals stealing over 50 bases a year, almost 100 bases a year. You got Robert Hassel. Uh, that is to 199, Fuchsia or Magenta Shimmer. And there's Dylan Dodd, 48 out of 100, Atomic Refractor for Casey and the Braves. Got Anthony Volpe, 18 out of 125. And Christian Pache, 98 out of 150 for the A's. Blue parallel for Oakland, it's gonna be for Donald. Volpe goes to Casey and the Yankees. And we got it, Ricardo Cabrera. John with the Reds. Yasser Mercedes, 166 out of 199. Nice one for Mark and the Twins. All right, ladies and gentlemen, final box coming up, final two autographs. We got another case of hobby in the store right now. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. So if you're watching live, go and snag some teams. We with a little luck, we might be able to run another one back tonight. We also have a uh, Bowman Chrome HCA Choice Edition back on the menu. So go to jazbeescasebreak.com and gobble up some teams there. And 
know, there are a lot of, lot of people hungry for some HTA. So check it out. We'll do this last two mini boxes. We'll do a quick little recap. Go through some more orders. Probably take a quick little break after that and then we'll, we'll go from there. Having this Thursday night football game here. The Bills are up 10-7. Yeah, Bills are up 10-7 and they're they're driving. They're in the red zone, second and goal. We got a Ryan Reckley. 184 out of 499. Refractor autograph for my rivals, the Giants, going to Dan. San Francisco. The Luis Angel Acuna, Ronald's brother, 217 out of 250. We've got a Christian Vaccaro for Sean, Sean M. The Acuna goes to David and the Rangers, and the Curio, the uh, Jason Curio, goes to Cleveland. That's for Jacob. And then a touchdown to Gabriel Davis. Aaron Ashby, there's a flag. 182 out of 499. Brewers for Brian. Julio Rodriguez, and our last auto, Jorge Barosa. That's for Jacob and the Snakes, the Diamondbacks. What else do we have here? There's Juan Yepes to 199 for the Cardinals. That's going to be for Mark. The Julio Rodriguez rookie card going to the Mariners. That'll be for Sean. Last little bit here. It's O'Neill Cruz, Harry Ford, and Roismar Quintana. And there you have it. And it was a touchdown. The flag was on on the defense. Holding, penalty decline, touchdown stands. Extra point is good. Here is the uh, recap for Picker Team 15. Thanks for watching. Thanks for getting in, everybody. Love all the different color there. A lot of good, great prospect hunting. Hopefully all future stars, what we're hoping for. There's the case hit. And we had in the middle of that break, that nice JT Schwartz, one out of five. Nice one. There you go, gang. I'm Joe for jazzpiececasebreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next Bowman Chrome break. Bye-bye.